So I want to go back to our, our discussion about identifying deep fakes. So my role here at the Post is to be the advocate for the user of technology, for the folks who are encountering AI images in the real world. And I want to understand how we're going to be able to tell what tools are going to be available to consumers to be able to sort through this new world of information where some things might be totally AI generated. Now, I know Adobe has <clears throat> is pushing this idea of content credentials as a way uh, to be able to identify you know, the source of an image. But that, of course, um, works for the good guys. The good guys are going to want to put content credentials in to identify uh, their, their sources or identify what's authentic. What are we going to do about the bad guys? Uh, it, I, I know there are researchers and, and companies that are increasingly trying to develop software to try to identify deepfake images or video or audio based on clues hidden in the files themselves. Is, is that an area that Adobe uh, is, is exploring? Do you think those tools will ever be helpful? Well, the interesting parallel in this uh, entire evolution is uh, when you eat something, uh, you know, I mean, how do you know what you're eating and what is the nutritional label associated with what you're really eating? And I think the industry saw this massive progress associated with a nutrition label associated with everything uh, that you can eat. Certainly some people, you know, look at that, other people don't, and they're going to eat whatever they want to. And so I think that nutrition label is a good learning for us in terms of every piece of content with content credentials has the ability to specify where it came from. To your point, Jeff, all the good people are going to use it. They're going to specify what those content credentials are. They're going to specify how they might be used. I think if we can continue to train other consumers to say, if I don't see that nutrition label, I should, you know, a consumer beware in terms of where that content is. So that, that's one step in terms of the evolution of how we can educate people. I think the second stage will be programmatically, how can we take an entire set of images and try and understand that. And again, the technology is evolving there because the technology to hallucinate and create these images through AI is also expanding. And so I, I think we're going to find ourselves in this ever increasing uh, technology race of people using more technology to create these images, as well as to find out what the actual provenance of that is. And so, you know, but the good news is that more and more people are focused on both sides of it. Uh, I, I think for the viewers of your show, I think it's really important for them to understand this is not just about technology companies focused on the generative AI and the power of it, but also understanding exactly then how it was created, how it was changed, how can that be labeled, what are the rights associated with it, what are the downstream implications. And as long as we push the boundaries on both of them, uh, I think society will benefit.